Welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. Today's episode hosted by Goodell, Psycho Goldfish, Henry Eyes. Hey everybody, welcome to the New Grounds Podcast. This is a super special variety show because we have slightly less variety. With me is only two other hosts. Your boy, Good Al! And your other boy, his name is Henry E! Yes! The E stands for evil. Yes. How was that for an intro? You guys like that? That That was good. good I'm I'm a little little hyped today, but... uh, so how about that fucking week on the portal today, guys? Jesus. Yeah. It was a uh, yeah. It was something. So I was uh, shocked when I realized that the uh, Chutney Glaze finale did not get daily first, but that's because also on the same day, Sublo and Tangy Mustard season finale came out. Wild. Right. And I got daily. I don't even know what got second, actually. I haven't looked. Uh, so I'm pretty sure it was Twisted Grimm's uh, something was titties. I don't know. Something. Well, <laughs> titties deserve second place. They all, they, that's right. should be like that. It always does. No, it was Phantom Arcade Disorderly Conduct. Oh, that's right. Phantom, see, there's so many good submissions. I totally forgot Phantom Arcade, too. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, uh, pretty intense. So I do want to talk about the Chutney finale particularly, though. Yes. Um, obviously, the two... The two, the two good hosts in this episode, both animated in it. Um, <laughs> Psycho Goldfish, I didn't know you animated. Nope. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I'm at least a little bit embarrassed about my part because I don't even remember exporting it. I hardly even remember doing it because I did it like a year ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I guess I just totally flubbed the export like bad and the quality of like my part is really bad you're not alone i'm i i that's not actually the final part that i submitted i don't that's like the first one that i submitted mine um and it's all wrong like the water is all wrong it's all uh weird how could chutney do this to us See, now, I wasn't involved in it in any way, and when I watched it, it seemed pretty seamless to me. So, it, I don't know. You guys are probably just seeing your own flaws, but it came out pretty fucking good. Yeah, that said, like, it's, it is Contra's great. Part. Nick Contra's part is incredible. Brandy Buizel's part's incredible. That whole scene with the monster under the ground when it splits, that's just wild. That's just Newground Sakuga. <laughs> Nobody knows what that is? Okay. Shut up, weep. Cricket. <laughs> yeah, we're we're in a weeb free zone today, Henry. So it's all right. I got the bourbon. So it, <laughs> it, it's a it's a shame that that's absolutely the absolute last time we'll ever see Chutney, ever. He died after that car crash. No, he's dead. He's done. done. He's never animating again. That's that's the end. Wow. Yeah, he's actually going to kill himself. Is what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> Existence just didn't make sense. How about uh, Sublo and Tiny Mustard? Uh, y'all watch that? Oh I just watched God. it today. Uh, very good. So it's always good. This one struck me as being a little bit odd, like a little bit of a different, different. flavor. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, for one thing, it's kind of darker. Like there's a there's that episode. It's like pretty early on. Where, actually, I don't even know. I can't think of the chronology of the episodes, but. Uh, there's the one episode at the party where Katie gets yeah. drunk. Um, four or five, I think. Four. That strikes me as like being very different. Like in that one, it's just like kind of a funny joke that she's drunk. But in this one, it's like sad and kind of dark. I mean, it ends on like a happy note, but it's, I don't know. It's definitely part of, I guess, the the character development of Katie. But I I watched the uh, this episode at the premiere and I rewatched it so many times. I can't even tell. There's just... There's just something different about the way uh, Aaron Long, uh, I guess, makes cartoons. He has more uh, space in mind, in a way. Like, if you look at all the backgrounds and the way uh, characters interact with uh, the scene, I don't know. I really like how he handles that. I mean, what's interesting about that, too, is it's all, like, very real. I mean, 
Definitely. He probably doesn't want us talking about this again, but uh, <laughs> when, when we did the uh, Crickets episode with him, we were, you know, digging through his online persona and just, you know, doing the typical Crickets thing. And we found the actual unnamed Subway shop, sub shit, sub sandwich shop <laughs> that, uh, that, the, that Subpar is based on. And I mean, the and we, you know, went to it on Google Maps and like looked at the pictures and stuff. And I mean, it is a very, very accurate portrayal of Toronto. So it's pretty neat. I love the scene in that episode when they are running to the train station and they run in. And the, the person working there is like, that's the last train. And they dash up the stairs really fast and like get in the train right as the doors close. Because that is like so real. That is, <laughs> that is I, so I, delicious. I watched that and I was like, that is... I've been exactly like I've done ex- that exact thing. So I yeah, don't know. That was same fun here. Fun. For me, my favorite part was, uh, I guess, Katie's little breakdown. <laughs> well, and, uh, uh, somebody brought it up in the chat too. Uh, Katie, Katie's like drunk animations are really interesting because it almost looks like it's almost like he was drunk when he animated them. You know what I mean? It, <laughs> like, yeah, it's that sort like, of devolved drawing style. I really. Yeah. Or he's got a, re- a really, really good source that he has observed multiple times. Well, that's that's the thing, though. Is it's it's like you know all the the characters have like a very um, you know, cohesive animation style and like aesthetic, and not not even just the animation, but the the you know character design is very consistent. Yeah. But then when Katie's drunk, her movements become like more cartoony i guess in a way like more animated but then the it's almost like the frame rate is lower so the yeah it becomes more smeary it becomes more ah man but but that's that's all about his 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 skill mr mr aaron long i don't know it's see i've I've never really watched him so i'm i was waiting for like all the episodes to build up so i could binge him and i just never got around to it but it sounds like now's a good time to do that so you guys have fun with the rest of the show. I'm going to go watch some sub I mean, there are 15 episodes now. Like, I feel like it'd be a good, good yeah, time, good binge. Them. Good solid binge. Yeah. yeah, I saw the first one. I shouldn't say I haven't seen any of them. I saw the first one. I was like, oh, this is kind of cute, but I never really got hooked onto it. But and then it the changes one. absolutely. That's another thing about this episode and why it's so different. Like, I, I love this when when they take uh, all sorts of different aspects of a show and sort of show the, I guess, the little world of it. Like, uh, the, uh, the friends all up in a park and like a little picnic. Like, I don't know, that was, I guess, quite unexpected for Tangy Mustard. You'd expect to be like these two mascots just hanging out uh, at their store the entire time. But uh, throughout the whole thing, they go to so many different places. Right, yeah. And, I still love that con episode. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys uh, see the new Phantom Arcade? I haven't seen that one yet either. I have not. <laughs> I have that. Jeez, wow. Uh, that was something. If none of you have seen it, then <laughs> then you get to talk about it. <laughs> I, I get to talk about it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's happening. We we said we won't talk about. It. <laughs> it's very very topical, I guess. Oh, does does it solve a certain problem? <laughs> it solves all problems. All right. Well, we'll come back to that then. <laughs> we'll, we'll circle back around. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other one that came out this week that I just fucking loved was the fucking Tetris anime. I fucking loved that one. Did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah. Thought... Oh, it's a fuck. That's the best fucking anime parody I've seen in forever. And the be- the best thing about it is like the whole plot line of these fucking Tetris blocks is exactly the same as a real anime plot. So it's like it's not even a parody; it's a real fucking anime until the end when the blocks start fucking each other. Then it's a parody. <laughs> no, no, then it's real anime. Yeah, I mean, if you if you've never ever seen Tetris blocks fucking, you need to go watch the Tetris anime. It's fucking great. I know. How would it even work? Right. Well, apparently they just boop, and the fucking punchline is the best. I'm not gonna spoil it, but it's the best. It's like two Lego blocks pressed together. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that's exactly how sex works, Henry. The little bump goes in the hole, and that's where baby Legos come from. Baby Legos, the one by ones. Yeah. When Tetris pieces do it, they like like break apart. They like die. So 
<laughs> is this a podcast now? It's like, it's like the reverse <laughs> procreation. <laughs> Like praying, praying mantises where they get eaten after they fucked, you know? <laughs> oh, I forgot. That's a thing. That's a thing. Uh, what other delicious Newgrounds cartoons have recently come out? You know, I'm an idiot. I did see the freaking Phantom Arcade one. I just forgot it was the new one. Uh, that was pretty funny. There's a lot of punching involved. In a lot yeah. of a lot of wife beating. A lot of wife beating. Some fine police work. Uh, As yeah. one does. Yep. Any anyone that would have uploaded their cartoon today would have gotten front, or I, I guess yesterday uh, would have gotten uh, a daily first because there's not much going on today. If they would have wait, waited one day, any one of those <laughs> cartoons would have been daily first, right? No offense <laughs> to the current daily first, but they're not pulling in thousands of views. That's right. You didn't earn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not funny. Uh. Which reminds me. <laughs> Uh, I saw this on the on the portal, and I'm only mentioning this uh, because uh, Miss Moonified uh, reacted to it or uh, uh, gave a tweet for it. Um, there's this thing uh, called the Mission. Was it what is it? Mission Moonified collab. I don't know if anyone's seen this. <laughs> oh God! Oh no! You guys know what's coming. <laughs> it's right in the name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's relating to uh, Miss Moodified. Um, one of her, I guess, is it fair to say, moan compilations <laughs> got set a daily second, and oh. people very much did not like that. And then, uh, in I guess, the spirit of Street Fighter Chode, I, is that fair to say? They tried yeah. to make a, a little collab around this little lady. <laughs> uh, listen, it's all right. It's all right, guys. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't hate them. She wasn't bullied to death. She's still alive. It's fine. Here she tweeted at Lobster Mango. That's the guy that made the collab. Uh, and at Newgrounds. Oh my God, I love this. Thanks for the fun poking. I might have to make a parody of this if I have the free time. Ha 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 ha. Solid impression, Henry. Solid impression. <laughs> Very solid. <laughs> Not enough moans. There weren't enough moans. <laughs> lobster <laughs> mango. Oh, Newgrounds. Lobster mango. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. So uh, we had said before we started this episode that we were going to post this again, and I totally forgot. So just for everybody that's here, and just while I'm thinking about it, here's a link to our Newgrounds thread that's up right now. Come yes. ask us questions, because pretty soon we're going to start answering them. Oh, so, yes. <laughs> post your questions in there. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, before we get to that, um, anybody been keeping up with the art-inspired music submissions? I haven't really been keeping on top of it. I did see uh, Little Boxes, though. That was pretty yeah, good. I've only Little Boxes is the only one I've seen, yeah. <laughs> for listening to, I guess. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Little Box is the only... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I get it, I He's get the it. only one that matters. He's the <laughs> only one. Well, no, it's 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 not that. It's more like the opposite of that, where we knew that Little Box's submission was going to be the absolute worst, so it was the only one worth listening to. <laughs> yeah, you want to see what the boss of the bar is? Cool art, that's fine. But then you, yeah, you check out Little Box, and it's like it's like comedy. You know what I mean? Just how bad. <laughs> It's like Jesus. It's, it's the room of music. <laughs> oh my god. Here's the here's the the submission that he decided to draw. This looks like this looks like Steve from Minecraft devouring a creeper. I thought it looked like James Lee's character, but it's, it's kind of like the avatar of the artist uses too. So it's almost like a, a mix of James Lee and Steve from Minecraft. <laughs> Steve Lee. It's Steve Lee. Or as Henry would call him, Stevily, because he can't pronounce Stevily. names. Stev, what are you doing? Stevily. What are you doing, Stev? Well, leading into this uh, BBS post, we're going to answer your questions in a bit, but uh, it's kind of a follow-up to another very important thing we wanted to do. Uh, we here at the New Grounds Podcast take our roles very seriously as leaders in our community, and we want to solve all the world's problems today. So... Uh, Anybody got a problem we should solve? How about you, Goodell? Is there a problem you think we need to solve right now? You know, in this episode, I think we should just lay out the groundwork that we are here to solve the world's problems, especially within our communities. You're right. That is our position as, you know, figureheads in the uh, community. Um, so, 
So join us next time when a panel of a bunch of white dudes are going to solve racism. All right, and uh, let's go check the uh, Ask NGP forums uh, on that note. Uh, all right. So let's check the first one. Uh, I'll do the first one here. It's uh, Wonder Swifty. How do I destroy art blog? I really miss drawing. I can't do things anymore. Who has an answer? I well, have an answer. That's Never good. mind. You go ahead. <laughs> no, I do not have an answer. My answer involved the chainsaw, so you go ahead. Listen to me. Listen to me. You can't beat the chainsaw. But also, <laughs> if you've got really hard art block, uh, you, you got to treat it. You got to do studies. You got to treat it like homework. Well, if you don't know what to draw, then uh, go to like a figure drawing site. There's ones like the line of action. There's uh, a bunch of other ones that I've forgotten. Daily sketch. That's it. Uh, and just draw some ladies, not men, ladies or feminine <laughs> guys. I don't know. Whatever you're into, but uh, and heads and hands and, and animals and shit, but you know, ladies, and that's how <laughs> Artbox disappears. Um, to follow that up, uh, if you follow Sabtastic, Sabrina, she does these bird blobs. All she does is take like a blob of paint or whatever, and then whatever shape they are, she turns them into birds. Um, try doing that, but turn them into ladies. <laughs> yeah, lady birds. <gasps> <laughs> that, that should help. All See, right. I, I kind of have a hard I, I sort of have an issue with, with both of those answers though, because I feel like if you're already not uh in like in a sort of state of mind where you feel like you can approach uh drawing the things that you want to draw, I feel like it'll be even harder to make sure that you're able to draw ladies. <laughs> uh, I mean it's more of a technical thing. It's more of a like a, a draftsmanship and gesture and all that kind of stuff. Like if, if you're, even if, even if it sucks, just keep going, keep going. Once you grind through those sucky images after like a hundred figure drawings, you're going to get somewhere. You're going to, your drawings are going to change. You're going to look at them. You're going to be proud. Your observational skills will get a lot better. Uh, yeah, you just got to level up so you can draw better ladies. Yeah, yeah. And then you'll, you'll feel more fulfilled. You'll draw something. You'll be like, Oh my God, that's so fucking good. Except for that, that won't come. That won't come until like years and years later, or, but, or but maybe you, never, you, possibly if, never. If you can't get into that, like the, the bird blob thing is really good for for real. It's a really good example because what yeah, you're doing, you, you're, you're drawing, you're doing something outside of the box. You're not drawing something that you intend to draw. You're just seeing a shape, whatever you see in it, you do, you make it happen. So it's not as you know creatively stifling. It's like it kind of frees your brain up because you just whatever you see, you draw. You don't have to think. You just do it. So I try, like try stuff like that. Yeah, try stuff like that. It should help. Sort of similarly, there's that uh, sprite draw. I feel that way about the sprite draw, too. Like, you yeah. can get a generated sprite. It's like just, you know, a couple of colored squares, and then you just kind of draw what that what you think that actually is. And I think that's yeah. a good one too. Yeah, and I then like that, tri- that triggers really. yeah, that triggers natural creativity where you're not forcing yourself to be creative. It's just you see something and you're like, okay, this is what I see, and you draw it. So yeah, try well, as long as long as what you see is a lady. Yeah, you, well, why wouldn't it be? Exactly. <laughs> kind of goes without saying. All right, yeah. let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Next, the, question. Uh, next question is from the Major Mel. Honest question: How do I get more eyes on my video game? Am I trying to appeal to the wrong people? Well, the Major Mel, we've uh, we've we've glanced at your game catalog, and one big thing that stands out is you haven't made a fucking game since 2014. <laughs> so uh, maybe make a game. That would be the first step. <laughs> and then add ladies so, to it. Make sure yeah. there's ladies oh, in there. There are ladies. There are ladies. Believe me. Oh, yeah, there better be ladies. That being, that being oh. said, the other thing too is if you're going to make a new game, it's 2020. So, uh, no, don't, <laughs> don't use Flash. <laughs> Something that is not Flash. I mean, unless Just you're use. like specifically trying to make a like retro game that's going to be played in Ruffle exclusively, but at that point, you've. You've you know circumvented your question. Nobody's going to play your ruffle game. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Uh, Unlearn action script now. Uh, uh, if you want a real answer, um, I would suggest first off uh, get on Twitter and find a lot of like the indie de- game devs that haven't really got a big name for themselves. Um, find a couple of them, follow them. Through them, you'll find other people that are doing games, and basically just kind of watch what they're doing and kind of emulate that. 
most of them are posting just like short little videos of their little indie games and kind of getting interest uh following like um people who run channels dedicated to curating up and coming indie games uh if you can if you can kind of just build a chance basically you want to build a little network of people who can kind of help promote you um there's really no way to just magically get eyes on your game without putting in the work that's all there is to it well that's actually a really good point too is that the the community is is an important aspect of that too like you know it's possible for people to have communities around their work that aren't creators themselves but i feel like arguably the most important first step is getting into a creator community you know what i mean and that's obviously newgrounds facilitates that a lot but if you just like post your game on newgrounds and then not do anything beyond that then it's not going to go anywhere but i mean if you like you know post your game and you review other people's games and you participate in the forums and stuff like that then you get in with that community and then everybody it's the it's the whole like a rising tide lifts all ships kind of thing yeah and if you got newgrounds back and you and you move on to something like twitter like most of the newgrounds users will follow you on twitter uh and they'll retweet your stuff and then you'll start getting more eyes from other communities so it's it's just a nice big way to go viral that way too so but yeah, yeah definitely definitely get newgrounds yeah, yeah. Newgrounds is like a great place to become a big fish in a small pond. But if you want to get out of that pond, you got to make some waves. Ha <laughs> Water metaphors. Splatterdash also says you have to set it to A rated. That's how you get all the exactly. eyes. No matter what the game is, make it A rated and people will check it out. Just start it off with like a nipple and then just, just go from there. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's just the nipple, too, you know. It could be a man's nipple, could be a woman's nipple, could be a non-binary nipple. Literally nobody knows, and that's like the fun part about it. You throw the nipple in yeah. and then never never mention it again. That's what's well, so intriguing. There's the game idea. The, the Major Mel, you've got a free game idea. You've got marketing advice. Um, you're going to be famous like by the end of the week. Uh, we're going to expect about 100000 from you, so... Very frankly, next question. <laughs> next question comes from Psycho Goldfish. How do I get out of answering these questions? And I feel like, Josh, you should probably answer that one. Um, yeah, I'm just going to hit the disconnect button and y'all have fun. Hey, I figured it out. Nice. Good job. All right. Next one comes from Mayor Dump. You guys ever been to Walmart? No. Oh, I fucking love Walmart. It's like going to the zoo for free. I've never been to Walmart. They don't have I... Walmart in Germany. I have actually been in a few different Walmarts all across this continent, actually. I've been in Walmarts near the West Coast. I've been in Walmarts in the South. I've been in Walmarts in the Midwest. I've been in Walmarts in Canada. Canada's got nice Walmarts. I don't know. The Montreal Walmart's kind of pathetic. but well, er- Everything in Montreal's pathetic. Um, especially French Canadians. <laughs> I, have, I have an important question. What the fuck is Walmart? What is it actually? What is Walmart? <laughs> Walmart's like a big buy whatever you need store. It's like a department store, but for, yeah. poor, for poor like people. Basically a big converted warehouse. Like you go into it and it feels <laughs> like you're in like an Amazon sorting facility. <laughs> it's full of like useless things. Do you guys have like you- a Target and stuff over there? I don't know what Target is either. I went oh. to, that was my next question. <laughs> Let's so, talk about TK Maxx. TJ Maxx. Target TK is Max. Tar- TK Maxx Target is for Walmart clothes. for yeah. Target's Walmart for the middle class, and Walmart's for poor people. And so, what's the like one percent of the one percent version of Walmart? Fucking Gucci. I don't know. I feel like it's probably just owning Walmart. Yeah, <laughs> it's owning Walmart. My, anyway, my grandpappy said, "If they don't have it at Walmart, you don't need it." <laughs> okay. <laughs> before we before we go on, I'm curious, Josh. Do, do your do your WalMarts there sell guns? Uh, not anymore. They did. I mean, we're we're in Colorado here, so there's, there's a big uh, base of gun lovers here. So they were they were not too happy when guns started going away. Are they, is that like a nationwide thing? Are they getting rid of guns because they still got guns here? They have well, they got rid of certain. I think they still have some guns, but they don't have um, like big guns. <laughs> I can't be expected to not live without my guns. Yeah, uh, it's, it's hard to it's hard to buy a school shooting quality gun anymore. Let's put it that way. Yeah, no more automatics out there. 
All right, moving on. <laughs> anyway, next question. Glory <laughs> Blizzard says, what do you think of people that find shit disgusting, especially shit belonging to attractive people of the opposite <laughs> sex? How do you convince them that it smells amazing and tastes amazing and looks amazing? Listen to me. In case you guys don't know, <laughs> Gory Blizzard is a fucking legend. Gory Blizzard, are you listening right now? If you could give me a little little sign of life in the uh, on-air live chat, I'd really appreciate that. Anyway. <laughs> What's the answer, guys? <laughs> uh, Henry, I think you are uniquely qualified to answer a question regarding how to convince other people of the high, <laughs> high quality <laughs> shit, literal fecal matter from an attractive person of the opposite sex. Listen to it's, me. You know, I don't support Gory Blizzard, but I support Gory Blizzard, whatever <laughs> he needs does that's in the law between consenting adults. He can do that <laughs> himself. <laughs> a terrible answer. Josh, how do you convince somebody of the opposite or no, how do you convince anybody that shit from an attractive person of the opposite sex is well, amazing and delicious. Amazing and looks amazing. Let, let me break down his question first. Let's let's look at the first line. What do you think of people that find shit disgusting? Especially blah blah blah. Well, I'm one of those people and I think those people are fucking great. <laughs> the average person. <laughs> Is this just us shitting on Corbus? So this reminds me of uh, the last time we did something like this, where we were just kind of browsing the forums for stuff to talk about. The, <laughs> the one person that we read their message was like, "Why do you humans find death so scary?" <laughs> Like this is a very similar question. What is it with you humans and being repulsed by feces? <laughs> that yo, <laughs> fucking humans. Go to go to the feces dot com forums or whatever it's called. Go find people like yourself, <laughs> people who had the same experience. Henry, I'm not going to do this, so I need you to do it. Will you please open a new tab and type oh, in no. feces.com and go to it? Okay, okay, let's see. <laughs> Feces. I don't know how to spell feces. Yes. F E F E C E S. Or as you would say it, feces.com. 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 Okay, well, we're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Uh, yeah, okay, feces.com is available for sale. Listen to me. After okay, this okay. show. Gory, go okay, fund me. Gory Blizzard says you should try freshscat.com. Oh, there you go. We got a good recommendation. recommendation. Listen to me. I'll I'll take one for the team. <laughs> I'll take one for the team. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. This is exactly what I should be, by the way. <laughs> yeah, close that. <laughs> so, okay, now, that, now that you've seen that, how do you convince somebody that it's tastes amazing and smells amazing and looks amazing? Uh, drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, drug, there's some drugs drug, out there. Drug, you got to drug them. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That's the only. <laughs> <laughs> It's one of the ways. <laughs> it's one of the Gory ways. Blizzard. We appreciate you, Gory Blizzard. One day Good we'll question. interview you. Good question, Gory Blizzard. Thank you so much. Moving on. <laughs> Kute Comic says, does your phone have games? Does your phone Minecraft doodle jump? And uh, I'm going to start with the first question. No, my phone does not have games. And that is because my phone... Has eight gigabytes of internal memory, <laughs> <laughs> a oh, not significant that. amount of which is occupied by the system. So, no, my phone can literally not fit games. <laughs> I used uh, to have that, but now my phone has games, but I never play them. I never play phone games. I never play actual games except for like Counter Strike and the hidden. But and Left for Dead. But I, I never play actual games except for Counter Strike. And <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me; <laughs> those those ones are cool. Those ones are cool. And and Flash games on Newgrounds, of course. But phone games fucking suck. In case you guys haven't realized that, 
And the only case where I'll play phone games is if I'm on a flight and I'm so fucked for something to do that I have to get my phone out. And I'm in the air. Thing? Something crazy is happening. I'm flying. People couldn't do this for fucking centuries, and now I can do that. And I start playing goddamn phone games. What, what game? <laughs> what game are you playing, Henry? I, I Sudoku or something. Chess. I don't know. <laughs> nothing. Nothing impressive. Nothing. I used I, when I was a kid that I was on that dead trigger. You know, ah, sh- you know, Counter Strike for your phone. I forgot what it's called. The Minecraft Pocket Edition and all that stuff. But now, no, <laughs> absolutely but, not. <laughs> Real question is, does your phone Minecraft Doodle Jump? It does Minecraft Doodle Jump, but do I Minecraft Doodle Jump? I don't think I Minecraft Doodle Jump. Do you Minecraft Doodle Jump? Psycho Goldfish from Newgrounds.com? I I sometimes jump with my doodle up, and then I go and play <laughs> Minecraft, but is that the same thing? I don't know if I'm doing it right. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> all right. So, Next question comes from Miss. Mist says, are you autistic? Probably. Maybe. Probably. Possibly. Listen to me. A very We're all on the... just there. I just accidentally refreshed my Discord. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so good good L's a solid yes. <laughs> well, actually, okay. So no, that's I, I do kind of want to talk about this. I think there is a non-zero chance that I kind of am like somewhere on the spectrum. I, and I, I really don't know. I've never, never like seen a psychiatrist or whoever would diagnose that. Um, but I definitely, I mean, I have some like odd characteristics that I recognize as being abnormal, I think. Uh, um, I get that. But the, the thing is like, uh, I, I feel bad saying everyone does. Is that kind of like everyone's on somewhere on the spectrum mindset. <laughs> I don't know. See, I don't, has I don't know though. Movie. Like, I like obviously everybody has like, you know, their own quirks, right? But I feel like just from assessing my experiences interacting with people, I have like for one thing, I think people have a tendency to find me weird, not necessarily in like a repulsive kind of way, but no, I it's mean, repulsive. Thing, like, okay, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, and confirmed. Like, uh, so, like, I'm really bad at making eye contact, for example. Like, I just, I can't do it. Yeah. If, if I'm talking to somebody, I cannot look you in the eye. I just can't. He's, he's not even looking at Discord right now. I, well, I'm not. I'm staring at my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I have it even worse. It was, for, for me, for a while there, it was, like, uh, eyes are no eye contact at all or just full constant. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I'm kidding. I'm but I don't know. I I feel like I do, it just does not come natural to 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 some people. I don't know certain stuff. Like well, I don't so, know. I guess the other thing is like I think, and I, I feel like this is a characteristic of of forms of autism. I I don't know, but I do have a tendency to like pick a thing that I find interesting and then get like way too into it and then if it gets brought up in conversation i will just like deep dive on that top like like cartoons like i can talk about like uh the flapjack misadventures of flapjack and post flapjack shows endlessly like and and the creators behind them you know what i mean like third van Orman and and uh jg quintel and Pendleton Ward. Uh, Pendleton Ward. Yes! Oh, I can talk about those people forever. And I have found myself in situations where, like, one of those shows, like, happened to get brought up in conversation, and then I just take it, like, way too far. Anyway, to wrap it Bring back it. to the question, I might be. I don't know. <laughs> I Listen, think we got no a good one... demonstration. I think, I think you are. <laughs> It, it, ah man! It, it, whenever somebody mentions a show by Gendy Tartakovsky, and I fucking go on about Gendy Tartakovsky, I I know that feeling. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. uh, what about you, Josh? Yeah, I'm similar, but not with Flapjack. I go way farther back. You can, if anybody brings up fucking Generation One Transformers, it's it's an all day conversation. <laughs> <laughs> the Asian no. Now, my my son is on the spectrum, and when we had him take the little preliminary test, it's basically just like a checklist of 
you know, is, does he do this? Does he do that? Does he, and like 90% of the shit, like I would have checked for myself at his age. So I'm pretty damn sure. I mean, pretty, so yeah. now I'm, now I'm curious. So like what, what are some examples of the things on the checklist? If you can remember. Uh, it's been a while, but it's, it's similar. Like what you're talking about, like um, social interactions are tough. Um, looking like you don't have empathy because you don't understand what's going on. Uh, being obsessive about specific subjects only being friends with kids that are outcasts, things like that. I mean, that's Newgrounds in a nutshell, really. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. Like, I wasn't going to say it, but yeah, I, I had a very, very similar uh, experience, I guess, with, with that kind of shit. Yeah. And the thing is, with the high-functioning autism, you know, it's almost a superpower in a lot of ways, because when you do learn to focus on something, and you don't let emotional bullshit get in the way of it, you know, you just you're unstoppable, you know? So when it comes to like creating like programming or anything that's like completely logic based for me, I can just like hammer in on it and just shut everything else up and not get distracted by too much bullshit. And then there's other days where like, you know, when stuff that is emotional finally kicks into my head to what it really means, then it just, I become obsessed with that. So it's, it's really weird. Yeah. All right, moving on. Next question. I it. <laughs> Tony, Tony Studios asks, how do I hack new grounds? Well, Tony Studios, first of all, you have to, and the, and the SSH, ter- <laughs> sure, you have the proper credentials, but then. Oh, all no, you- he's done it. He's done it. And then. <laughs> he deleted new grounds. But what's really most important is if you have Tom's fa- password, it's. S three nine, and that's how you hack new grounds. All right, okay. Splatterdash asks: Is RGP anims an instrument? <laughs> Wait, no, what? no, he no. You, nobody wants to play RGP anims. RGP anims is a tool. You got to get your hand in there and just start blowing, and then. <laughs> <noises>. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think if I think if Ryan was here, he would say something like. Bro, I'm underage. <laughs> Mitch Elf asks, what are your opinions? What are your opinions? Are more grimdark themed of pieces of art? Okay, what are your opinions on grimdark more themed pieces of art? Okay, I think that's pretty delicious. Funny. Stay away from edgy and go to atmospheric. I gotta say that style of art is like when I when I buy like a physical book, that's kind of like what draws me to book covers. But that's right. That's right. I associate it most with. I don't think I really have an opinion here. Um, like, there's a subreddit for that, and I see it sometimes, and I'm like, "That's cool. That's a cool piece of art." But I, yeah, I don't. Not mine. Really have any more more of an opinion than that? Uh, well, Jamat is asking a question that's kind of lame. I mean, it doesn't really impact anybody like these other ones have. But he asks, "How do we solve world hunger?" Listen to me, Jat Maz. Don't be so incredibly selfish. I'm hungry right now. <laughs> I live on the world. Why don't you buy me a pizza? <laughs> so step one, get Henry a pizza. We got to do this one mouth at a time, starting with Henry. Exactly. I actually do I'm have some, some actual thoughts on this. For one thing... That's not just because I hate mowing. I do hate mowing. But that's a small factor here. I think one thing that's a kind of interesting idea is to basically replace more or less all lawns, like just sod grass lawns with gardens. And then you can have you know, some sort of agency that the whole purpose of it is to send people's gardens if they, you know, if you don't want to maintain your own lawn garden, then there's some institution that does that for you at any exchange thing that they, you know, would take the, the product, any like vegetables and fruits and stuff, or you know, they take them into your own and take it yourself. And then that food is then distributed. We have that. They're called uh, Mexicans. Ha uh-huh. ha. Then, uh, obviously food waste is a huge issue. Um, and the, the first thing that you could point to is expiration dates. Uh, by and large, expiration dates are entirely meaningless, but they sort of have this psychological impact where, you know, if you've got a jug of milk or whatever, and it says, you know, June 20th, 2020 is the last day, like after that, it's expired. Then after, after that, you're not going to drink the rest of your milk, you know, even if you still have like half a gallon or whatever, um, you know, it's a pretty good chance that the milk is totally fine and you could still drink it and it would not be a problem. Um, and then of course, you know, 
food banks don't take expired food, even though by and large expired food is, you know, as, if, as long as it's not like egregious, like it expired in 1945 or whatever, it's like, it's probably fine. Um, and you could, you know, test it to be sure, but uh, food waste is definitely a problem. So addressing food waste and replacing lawns with gardens, I think is a good first step. Yeah. So I have a lawn right now. You're a fucking racist. Anyway, next question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Henry, Henry, we're not solving racism until next episode. Okay, okay, next episode. Next yeah, episode. We, need, we need more white guys on the panel for that. <laughs> how how do you next deal episode. with other artists' jealousy, asks Cintrus. Ooh, wow. Ooh, this is a good question. Wow. <laughs> I just hey, ignore, I, really I ignore everybody because everybody's jealous of me, so I don't really have a dog in this fight. I just ignore everybody. Yeah, I might have misunderstood the question then. I guess my take is, like, if you're the one who's feeling jealous of other artists, which is an experience I have regularly, as much as I would prefer not to admit that. Um, so, like, one thing I went through, like, fairly recently. Um, this is, like, a couple of months ago. So a couple of months ago, I got really into the music of Jack Stober, and uh, I was listening to uh, High Low a lot, which is my favorite Jack Stober album, uh, or Stauber, I don't know how his name is pronounced. Um, but I was like really into it. I love the like musical stylings. I love the, the vocal stylings, the lyrics. It's like so good. I'm just super into it. And one day, just like on a way, I didn't really know much about him. Like I'd seen his like cartoons and stuff, but I didn't really know much about him as a person. So I looked him up. And he's like a year older than me. And that just like destroyed my confidence. Like, and it really shouldn't, right? Like I should just be happy ah. for somebody who's like a good artist and, you know, just appreciate their art. But to realize that like somebody whose art I really like look up to a lot, somebody who I, I wouldn't say I like it aspire to emulate, but just, you know, I, I would like to one day make art that is, that I feel is as good as Jack Starbuck's art is. And the, but then I realized that, like, it. he's basically my age. That just, like, that, I don't know. That, that definitely know that took feeling. me down a peg. Um, so that all being said, how do I deal with that? I actually have no idea. I kind of don't. I kind of <laughs> don't. Bury the feeling deep inside <laughs> and let it fester. That's pretty much, yeah. That's pretty <laughs> much. Become <laughs> better than them. Become better than them and then beat the crap out of them one day. <laughs> Listen to me. A long ass time ago, there's this guy, uh, the unserious guy, Blair Lawrence. You guys know him. Don't worry about it. I know that some people here know who that is. <laughs> He used to be shit. I'm like, no, I'm not being a dick here. He removed a lot of his old stuff. He used to be shit in the like I think uh, 2014 to like start of 2015. I can't remember. And then in that one year, he got so incredibly good. He was shit when I was shit. That's the worst part about this. And like I was. <laughs> I really liked his stuff then. And then it, 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 he became so unfathomably uh, good. He's only like, I think, a year or two years older than me. Um, I mean, I'm two or three years older than me. But uh, at this point, he's so incredibly good. Uh, I guess all you can do is is work on yourself and try to get closer to, to the people that you admire. But listen to me, Blair Lawrence, if you're listening to this right now, could you please, I don't know, uh, jump in front of a car so that I can feel better about myself? <laughs> okay. that, would be, that would be really cool. Let me answer this the way uh, it was actually asked. How do you deal with uh, uh, artists that are jealous of you? Um, what I would recommend is just get up to that artist, okay? Unzip your pants and pull your fucking huge cock up because it's definitely bigger than theirs. And just, you know, helicopter a little bit and poof, problem solved. Except for that it's right. not solved. They'll still be jealous, but fuck them. <laughs> right, yeah. But it's not literally. You got, you got to get consent first. Oh, exactly. Okay, yeah. I can't answer that question because no artist has ever been jealous of me. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's see. Any notes hey. said, any good ways you know to keep sand out of shoes? How do we keep ourselves crab free at beaches? They pinch. And do you know any good colored pencil brands that are not super expensive? Uh, first of all, first question is don't wear shoes. Yes. Second one. Sandals, um, yeah. F just get the fuck off the beaches. That's the crab beach. <laughs> just get that's, away from the beach. That's, fuck the beach. That's the, the crab zone, that beach. Um, <laughs> and any good color pencil brands that are not super expensive? Obviously, Rose Art. 
Rose are Buy eight. cheap ones. Cheap Rose ones are better. Is, he, I can't even say this. I Rosart is such garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, but, but it's just, a horrible, horrible colored pencil brand. The look for the look for the st- look for the store brand at Walgreens. That's I use Baba Castell, a German <laughs> brand. Faba Castell. I don't know if they if they go around, if they hip around, if they hop around. Are they cheap? Uh, maybe I don't know. It depends what your standards are. They're not the most expensive, but if you're looking to buy the most expensive, you know, are you really going to get good quality out of it? Who cares? Just use the 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 cheaper stuff. And who <laughs> who uses colored pencils for like the best art anyway? It, you know, it's, don't worry about it. Just get the cheap ones. Just buy uh, voices by out. Corey. Says, how do you suck a bag of dicks? And I would just, I would assume you just wrap your mouth around it and inhale. Well, here's here's the thing. I mean, you might be used to little dicks, Goodell, but um, some of us are more familiar with larger dicks. And uh, a bag of dicks is really hard to get in your mouth. So you either need to do vigorous cheek stretches um, to get that bag in there, or and this is this is the smart way to do it: take the dicks out and just suck them one by one. Exactly. Ah, it's so time consuming. It's the way to well, go about it. Then use the cheek stretch if you don't got the time. You got to build it up to it, man. You got to build up to it. It's part of your new grounds initiation. That's right. That's how I got my job. Anyway, Surfman asks, <laughs> what do you think of the front page and the content on there most of the time? It's good today, but most of the time it's garbage. It sucks. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's necessarily garbage. I guess in a way, the front page does kind of represent the best of new grounds. But I guess... And maybe this kind of comes from a place of me kind of feeling like a Newgrounds underdog. I mean, or at least like, I, I don't know. I guess, and I, I think part of it comes from crickets too, when we would go out of our way to find the, you know, best of the unknown, essentially. Um, I always feel like there's better content on Newgrounds that just doesn't get front paged for, you know, a myriad of different reasons. But, uh, yeah, I feel like the front page is a good intro to Newgrounds, but if you really want to get into the good content on Newgrounds, you gotta you gotta look beyond it. Gotta go around. Except for for the audio pi- portal, you gotta you gotta do that hard work. Gotta look at the the most popular ones. <laughs> that that one's that one's harder, I guess. Uh, go into the under <laughs> section, and you'll realize that shut the fuck up, my phone. And then you'll realize <laughs> that you can that the best shit is on the front page or of someone that you know. If someone that you know got a cool cartoon, you're gonna be like, "Wow, I know that guy." And I don't know where I'm going on with this, but uh, the front page not bad, pretty pretty all right. I notice a lot of people. It has a bit of a problem uh, with front page. Well, not problem. It has a bit of a thing uh, that's known uh, as front page loops. Certain artists just uh, constantly on the front page, which isn't a bad thing. Like, if something's good, then you're obviously you're going to put it on the front page again and again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I guess you got to you got to make sure that the mods see your stuff if uh, you want to go on the front page. Easiest way to get front page is to make a podcast and just put new rounds in the name, and <laughs> you are guaranteed front, front page. page. You're guaranteed front page every time you upload. Just, just right. add Tom Pulp in the comments. <laughs> Actually, here's the question, Goodell. What's what was your first front page? Um, the first thing that ever that I ever posted that got front paged was an episode of Flow Downstream. Um, I can't remember which one. I think it was nothing slash void. Nothing slash void. I think that was my first front page. Well, you'll be glad to know. You'll be glad to know, and everyone will be glad to know that uh, getting a front page. <laughs> I, I, I okay. I set myself this goal a long ass time ago. Like, um, oh, I really want to get an art front page on Newgrounds. I'll work my hardest. I'll go full anime. You know, uh, fucking Dragon Ball training mon- montage and all that shit. Uh, turns out, a week later, uh, on the way to deleting a submission from Newgrounds, I find out that that same submission got front page. <laughs> it was, was this that, was shitty. That one? One. Wait, what? No, oh yeah, that one, one got too. That, that, I, I didn't want to delete that one though. I, I just put that one up. I was like, okay, I'm I'm working on something else. Uh, but uh, the first one that ever got front page. So let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was a. Uh, a drawing of Peter Griffin. 
a horrible. <laughs> I literally draw outside the lines in this drawing. I'm I deleted it so that you, you can't see that it it was front paged anymore. But uh, it you can see that it has like yeah five thousand views on this shit. I don't know how this happened. Uh, so, so many people hated me for this. They're like, you fucking suck. Most of the hated hater comments were deleted. But this this received a lot of hate. I I now looking back, I assume this was put up ironically. <laughs> but it's still <laughs> still uh, my first yeah. front page. Zero stars sucks. My first front page was the first front page submission on Newgrounds. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Uh, Taipan 3000 is like a trading space game, but Wade and Tom liked it so much they put a link to it on the front page, and that started the whole fucking thing. So, sorry. Wow. <laughs> you started this madness? I started the madness, apparently. Well, no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't literally put it on the page, so they started it. They started it with my game. To, uh, yeah, to roll back to like, how to definitely get something on the front page... One really easy way to get front paged is to just do a like a collab, uh, even if it's like small. Just like get a couple of people together to work on something, what, whatever it is, and then put that out. Even if it's like not that good, Tom's a sucker for collaborations. Yeah. Ooh, in, ge- in, in general, you know just find out you find out what Tom likes in general and make it. And if Tom likes whatever Tom likes, just you know cater to Tom, and it'll be on the front page. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, this is an uh, important 79 one. 79 asks, how do I uneat my foreskin smegma? And uh, I you know it. It's tasty. very obvious. I think the answer to this is very obvious. If you have a gag reflex, shove a finger down your throat, solved. Otherwise, if you don't, you're going to have to wait for it to come out the other end. That's yeah, pretty see, I've never heard of Belina. We took too long, guys. This was 26 minutes ago that he asked this, and I think it might be too late. It's too late. He already digested it. He's not you're, going back. You're, he, you're gonna die. That's that's what's gonna happen. It's gonna keep die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was, uh, last last question is from Tony Studios. Can Ryan dab? The answer is no. He can't. can't Nor should he try. Yeah. And that's, that's that. We did it. We, we did it. Great world problem solved. Great show, guys. I'm glad we could all get together and fix the world's problems. Yeah. Uh, it was fun. I liked that. I liked doing that. That was good. We'll probably do that again sometime in the future. And if you still have a problem, you're a huge bitch. That's it. That's the perfect place to end the show, I think. Okay, it's over. Right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye.